Yo, 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 straight up Tennessee fam, what's good? It's your boy Ruck in the building, joined by that guy, Cell. Listen, y'all, the final four is this weekend. First of all, man, happy Friday. We're going to do a quick recap of this week with spring football practice. Nico Iamaliava, Chris Brazel, Dante Thornton, Squirrel White, Kelsey Pope, they all meet with the media this week, along with the defensive back room, Jamad McCoy, um, gosh, Ricky Gibson, uh, Willie Martinez all meet with the media early this week. We'll kind of dive into that a little bit, but we are going to talk a little bit about what happened on Sunday, man, the Tennessee and Purdue game, uh, the loss second time to make it to the elite eight, uh, literally second time in school history, but the first time in almost 15 years. And so, uh, how bad that one stings, how bad it hurts. Um, is there any possible way you find another dominant score like Dalton connect in the future all of this to come y'all know what it is man it's your boys from straight up Tennessee y'all already know what it is tap in with us today happy Friday this is chop it up Friday and let's dive on in bro let's go What's good, everybody? Welcome to Chop It Up Friday. It's your boy Rugging in the Building, joined by my man, Cell. Y'all know what to do, man. It's the top of the show. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Hit that bell on YouTube right now. We're soaring right now to 1K subscribers. Listen, man, I don't, I don't care who you're sharing this with. Your mom, your auntie, your granny, granddaddy. Share it on X. And that's either that's on Twitter or your ex, girl, boy, whatever. Share it to them. <laughs> Whoever need it, that's who need to have it right now uh, because we need y'all to get this thing to 1K. But also, man, Apple and Spotify users, I want to hit pause and say I am so sorry about the upload last week. Have no idea what happened. Had the draft ready. Realized on this Tuesday it never posted. So you're welcome. But we're going to make sure this one posts here uh, and that you guys get uh, your, your fix of straight up Tennessee for the week. But. Uh, Sal, what's good, Brody? How your week been? Uh, you know, ain't nothing crazy. Started off with the L, but you try to make the most of it. How about you? Yeah, the L was everything. I felt like I think you know, I I used to let this stuff bother me, <laughs> but I, I think as I've gotten older, and I hate to say it this way, because it's true, but it's not true. But like as I've gotten older and a little less competitive, mm. like. I don't let it bother me no more. Like if I was still in high school, bro, I'd be, I wouldn't even go to school the next day. Cause people would be like, ah, y'all, ah. maybe you just learn it from your heartbreaks, you know, Tennessee, Maybe we don't been on too many ups and downs and a lot of downs. So you probably don't put a little guard up, you know, not <laughs> fully, you know, let it down. That's so. probably a piece of it too. But yeah, man, like I just, I don't know. Like I, I've, I've like, I'm super like, I think what my competitiveness that I had has turned to like discipline. So mm -hmm. like I can get up, bro, every morning, 530, take my pre-workout. I'm in the gym. Like I can do that. Now, back then I couldn't do that. Like right. I was just like, I'm just going to get on this court and, and really out here or on the field and just like outplay you. But now I guess like older kids, just everything. I'm like, I'm just more disciplined than I was. I'm like, I, I always say, I wish that I was as disciplined then as I am now. Cause I'm like, bro, I, there's no way I wouldn't be somewhere crazy, bro. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, that's part of getting older. It's always like, man, if I knew this when I was 18, this or that. You hear your I parents say that. You hear your parents say it all the time, and then it happens to you, and you're like, I am my parents. Right. Facts. <sighs> Stupid. <laughs> um. Spring football practice. Tennessee kicks off. The Orange and White game on Saturday, April 18th, 1 o'clock. Only 10,000 fans, bro. Like, that's going to be weird. Right. Better than 100, 
101,415 seats and only 10,000 filled because of the renovations. Like, is is the orange and white game this year as good of a recruiting tool as it has been? Ooh. I don't know. Maybe they can make it feel a little bit more intimate this way. Um, you know, NIL and everything. You're not even – a lot of it's just – showcasing what you got what you can do networking and all of those things so maybe they'll try to go more with that angle with the recruits and maybe since it's ten thousand, they might do like they did a couple years ago invite a lot of the friends and family and yeah. maybe depending on the kids if they love that type of environment maybe that could be uh, an advantage for us in the recruiting yeah that's true i think they got to take some type of approach. I know they're doing a lot of concerts and stuff in Vol Village. Like, they're going to try to make it feel like an elevated game day. Fans can still buy tickets to a watch party outside of it. And I know a lot of – like, dude, if you ain't getting tickets to the Orange and White game, Tennessee fans will will tailgate like we play in Alabama for an right. Orange and White game. That's just who we are. And I think that in itself is enough for a 18-, 19-year-old kid – or 20 year old kid in the portal to just be like, yo, these people are literally insane. Cause all they are. All it is for a spring game, only 10,000 and they still tailgating. No, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, man, it's been a crazy week for, for football, man. I've seen a lot of reels. Nico looks great. Just body wise. Like I know we talked a little bit last week from the 190 to 215. Um, but we've seen two, a guy in Dante Thornton. Dante Thornton came in at 205. He's now close to 220. Um, we had Dante Thornton on the podcast last year, and he just talked a lot about the transition from Oregon to, excuse me, to Tennessee. And one thing that stood out to him was just how the facility was so accessible. And it made me wonder, like, is it not accessible at other universities as it is? He's like, man, we can go in there at 1 a.m., catch football, work it, like do what we want to do. Uh, and he made it sound like it's not that accessible in other places. And so it got my, my mind to think, like, is that why some of these kids, Nico, Dante, who started off, they still skinny people. But like when they start off and they like really need to gain weight, is this why they're able to is like, man, they can literally be around the clock 1 a.m. Like, I'm going to go get some work in or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And so. um that's a massive advantage there for, for these guys getting bigger. I, hopefully that keeps Dante injury free because you saw uh, early in the year, he just didn't really feel like he knew what he was doing in the offense yet. Florida, he makes a big play, makes another big play later in the season. But those all those games, he's still hurt. Big, biggest game, best game he plays against Missouri, catches uh, Tennessee's long touchdown, done for the rest of the year. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, could this be his breakout year? I'm hoping that it is. Um, there's a lot of guys around him now. Squirrel White still returning. Chris Brazel, the transfer from Tulane. I'm hearing great things about Brazel. The fact that um, not only is he an outside guy who's a big guy, but this is a dude that looks like a big guy, but in his mind, he's been a small guy his whole life. Mm -hmm. He hit a growth spurt, bro, in his junior year from 5'10 to 6'4". Mm. junior to senior year went from 5'10 to 6'4". What was your biggest growth spurt? Like, when was it? From eighth grade to freshman year, I went from 5'8 to 6'1". That has to hurt, bro. Bro, my dad used to have to come and wake me up because I was sleeping away my whole summer. Bro. <laughs> like, 5'10 to 6'4". Like, six inches? Yeah. Dog, like, dude, that just sounds painful, bro. Yeah. And uh, he said at that time he was playing quarterback, running back, and was hooping. Like, he said he was always a hooper. So he's always had, like, a small guy kind of package, whether it was on the field or on the court. Mm -hmm. I can see how that now playing wide receiver is going to transition. A lot of people think, oh, he big, he going to be a big body guy. But, man, he can run the curl. He can run the dig. He can run the slant. But he also will probably be able to take the top off the defense. What kind of weapon is that for Nico, bro? Like. Right. A big with finesse, you know, with just an all-around bag like that that can 
like you said, show some quickness, play like a smaller receiver, and then also use the size. Gives you, you know, both. It's like two players in one. It just gives the quarterback that much more looks on offense. You know what you're going to get with Nico. You're going to get a guy who's patient. He's not going to turn the ball over a lot. I think he's going to take more risk than Joe Milton did. Um mm-hmm. As far as because I think he believes in his arm a little bit more. Like, Joe knows he can throw the ball deep, but he also knows he's not very accurate. And so I think that's why last year we didn't see a lot of 15 to 30-yard passes. It was either 10 and under or a bomb. Like, you never saw intermediate game with Joe Milton. Right. There was no 15 to 30. And so when you go back and watch the 2022 tape with Hendon Hooker at the helm, a lot of those balls that were screens for Joe Milton were dig routes or curls or slants for Hendon Hooker. Right. And so now I'm like, is that what we're getting back? Because that in itself, I would much rather throw the ball five yards across the line than throw it two yards behind and hope they get seven. Right. And that's what we were able to do with Hendon. That made our offense literally unstoppable because it'd be second and second and nine and we drop back to pass, and all he does is throw like a five-yard slant. Receiver gets four first down. Like, it just keeps the chains moving. Right. And so now, with Nico back there, the confidence hype is instilling in him, the confidence his reps are getting him, it makes me wonder, do we get back into that real tempo? I think we saw it a little bit in the Cheez-It Bowl, the Citrus right. Bowl. I think we saw it a little bit, but now with a full offseason, you know you QB1. Like, how much of an impact – does that intermediate game now affect the entire flow of the offense? I mean, I think we saw it last year when we wasn't able, able to open the playbook up like that. It felt like it was very predictable. So I think if we get back to the hooker style with Nico, and then Nico's probably going to use his feet more than hooker. I don't know. I'm scared. It's exciting. And I kind of like how Tennessee is downplaying the hype right now. Like you said, that's probably why a lot of people will be out for the orange and white game, going to the watch party and stuff, because we really don't know what we're getting. It's like a lot of potential and rumors, but it's just like, what are we really getting? Because no one's being like, oh, we're going to do this. This is our expectations and stuff like that. They're kind of like, it's like the locker room is keeping it in-house and me personally. I do too. Yeah, I like that too. I think that. It's kind of like 2022, though. Like, no one expected. We thought we would be good in 22, but mm-hmm. I don't think we knew we would be as good as we were. I think the schedule, the setup, how it's set up, it might be exactly like that, too, where North Carolina State is going to be equivalent to the Pittsburgh game. And then when we go to at Oklahoma, it's going to be equivalent to Florida. And then It's the- like, that's the game you got to win. You yeah. win that game. It takes so much down the road. Yep. You get the ball rolling because I don't think I've ever seen Tennessee play a three-game stretch like they're going to play in October, bro. You get – and I, I'm pretty sure you get Arkansas on October 5th. Mm-hmm. You get Florida at home on October 12th. You get Alabama at home on the 19th. And then you get Kentucky at home the next – like you take you have a bye week and then you got Kentucky. Yeah, that's tough. Boom, Florida, boom, boom, boom. Florida and Bama is back to back. It's tough alone. And I don't care if Florida's down. Like, it didn't matter last year. We lost. We they, cannot beat them in the swamp. Now, I'm not worried about this year. I think we, I, I hope we just absolutely beat the brakes off them. And I hope that this curse of not winning in the swamp in 25 can just be broken off the of Tennessee. Cause all it's going to take is one game. Yep. Win one. That's all you got to have. But, um, it makes me wonder, bro, like how much are we really not talking about? And because the media is is like, man, bro, Nico, Mike Matthews, another freshman, Braylon Staley, all of these guys are looking like that. Not only are they going to play well, but like especially the young guys like Nico's going to play. We know he's a starter. But these young freshmen are the transfers that have come in. Holden stays the guy from Notre Dame tied in like. We know he's going to play, but these younger cats that weren't we weren't necessarily expecting to get reps, bro. The, the the they're saying these dudes are like ready to play now, and so 
Right. Healthy competition is special. And I feel like that's where Tennessee, what we haven't had in so long is that healthy comp. Yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, the orange and white game is on April 13th. A lot to look forward to for this football team. Very excited about the defensive back room. Um, but man, it's time to turn a corner today and talk a little bit about what happened there in Detroit on Sunday uh, with the Vols, man, Tennessee goes down last game of the year to Purdue. Uh, Tennessee has not beat Purdue in any sport since 20, goodness, before 2019, at least. Because uh, we lost to the Carson Edwards team mm -hmm. there in the tournament that year uh, with Bowden, Bone, Schofield, Grant, and uh, City another Ball. game. So I, I want to say this first. Um, I've been trying to figure out how, how to start. Put it this way. I'm going to say it like this. I appreciate so much Santiago Vescovi, Josiah James, what they did. They were a part of the initial culture change, right? Like Bone Bowden, that, that group changed the culture as far as the winning culture of Tennessee basketball. That's when Tennessee became relevant again is that, that year, 2018-19. Then you get in Vescovy and James the year after, and they continued the winning culture. Yes, we didn't get to, you know, we got to Sweet 16s, but we didn't get to Elite Eights until this year. But I appreciate them so much for what they did to the university and how they continued to carry the mantle of success and all of that. But I am so glad they gone. <laughs> and not in a, like, disrespectful type way, but in more of a way of, I'm ready for a new wave of, of culture changers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're still going to have Zakai. This is last year, next year. Because mm -hmm. um, he don't have a COVID year, pretty sure. So, he yeah, came yeah. in 21. So, it's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, he's got one more year. And you truly have to now, like, as Rick Barnes, or I, that's even something I can ask in a minute. But, uh what excites you now about the future of Tennessee basketball? Even after the loss, you know, we might not ever see a guy like Dalton Connect ever again. Maybe we do. I mean, I think the last guy, the last guy that was like Dalton Connect was Allen Houston. And this is almost 30 years ago. Right. Like, you, you see what I'm saying? And so, like, this is a rare, rare thing. And so does Tennessee just find another guy that does it too? I don't know. But, like, what excites you now about – Obviously, you know, the whole year of this year, but then looking into the future for Tennessee basketball. Honestly, I don't know if there is. There's so much unknown, like I don't know if there's anything to get excited about other than it being like a whole new clean state. And so maybe it'll be like another transition year where Sakai will use his leadership to lead the team and then that will lead us into a group that we'll have for the next two, three years. But there, that's a lot of unknown because you're you're losing, like you said, Vescovi and Josiah, and then Dalton was a big scorer, but Mayshack isn't an offensive threat, or Biggs aren't an offensive threat. So like, we all you all, you always know what you're gonna get defensively with the Reed Barnes team, but offensively, I have no idea what we're gonna get. That's scary too because. I think we're all I think the potential is where we rest at this point is how how good we could be. Potentially, you got to so there's some hoopers in the portal. How yeah. many of those guys do we actually bag and how many of those are we turning into just recruits for 2025 or 26 or whatever? Right. Um, that really then poises the question of is Barnes going to be here in three four years yeah i mean how old is rick barnes let's find he's out he's getting up there because i feel like people were questioning his age when he got the offer from ucla a couple years ago rick barnes is 69 bro yeah like that's old for a hoop for hoop like i mean I, I think he can probably make it to 75 maybe yeah he's still active but but I'm at that point yeah, I, that's the toughest part, I think, is 
I mean, man, I didn't even realize this. And I think it's because we grew up with it, right? Like we grew up with John Calipari, bro. Coach Cal's 65. Mm -hmm. I was thinking like, man, yeah, he about 55, you know, like man, 65. Like that's not young to coach basketball. Like, especially with, and it's especially with how the game is changing from right. they've seen a lot of hoop. And so, you know, with Rick Barnes, it's like, you still kind of see the old gritty roughneck Barnes coaching style, even in this un physical um, dominant defensive type game. Like it's all about scoring the basketball at this point. Right. And we've still continued to struggle. So that's why I wonder is like with Dalton connect, you saw a completely different off. I've never seen Tennessee run ISO. Ever, mm -mm. ever, bro. Not with Rick Barnes, at least. Let me say that with Rick Barnes, I never run, even do pick, uh, pick and rolls. I mean, we still really don't. But there'll be a lot of times in those isolations where Dalton will wave up the big and like, "Come on, let me set set the screen for me." Yeah, and, and, you, too. and you could tell them bigs had no idea how to set screens. Mm. Like the only the only person that was setting screens right was Tobe. Right. Like, he coming up, and he going to know, like, look, it's either going to be a solid boom, boom screen, or he or it's a foul. And that's a good screen. Like, I'm cool with that. Right. Hey, dude, man, he just up here running like, <laughs> look, man, I call that man the big cricket. Like, KD, KG's the big ticket. Jonas the big cricket. He just he just be up there just, I don't know, man. Yeah. Jonas A. Dude had me. He, here's what I told. I told somebody this about Jonas Adu this year. And cuz I love Jonas Adu. I think his game is so nice. I think he's got a great upside. But the obvious is he needed he needs to eat. 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 <laughs> I'm yeah. not stuttering y'all. I'm saying that. He <laughs> needs to eat. Yeah. And he needs to lift weights. Like yeah. he needs to do a lot of things to change his body like at 611 and you 240 that's skinny for 611 yeah like i need i need about 260 265 yeah like that's body you know what i'm saying because like, he's not cuz with how lanky i don't want to say lanky but he's not a big big like we're trying to get the point across he's not quick and he's not a real over the rim lob threat so it's like, what do you do? You work on his quickness and his explosiveness the whole year, or you want to make him an under the rim type big. But I don't know. The way he moves and stuff, I don't see him getting any quicker. I wouldn't, I, I kind of agree with you. I think he needs to eat. He needs to eat. Yes. He, work on that midi. Keep working on that lefty, that righty, because he got a good touch around the rim. Great touch around the rim. He needs to work on his hands a little bit, but I don't I know. I said, what I said to somebody, I don't remember who I was talking to. It might have been you. I don't remember. But I said, Jonas Adu, this entire year reminds he his literally the way his year went reminds me of Olivier Kamwa. Kamwa against kind of like mm -hmm. middle of the pack teams, 30, 25, 20, and 10. Jonas Adu, 30, 25. 20 15 boards and then we play somebody that's like actually nice non-existent yeah it just fall like and i'm like we can't like is this a barnes thing or is it just like these guys just when they play guys that are better than them they don't want to play up to that competition i yep. mean bro to go you play 10 minutes he played 10 minutes against purdue oh for four mm -hmm. two rebounds one assist one turnover no mm -hmm. points. I wasn't mad at those mid-range shots that he was taking, though. But defensively, like you said, he's too small. He, he wasn't a factor. But no. that that game, for me, just talking about the game in general, I'm not mad at the effort that we gave. Yeah. I'm more upset. So like we were talking about earlier, just our emotions, watching games and stuff. Yeah. I was more mad at our coaching adjustments. I don't think we made any real adjustments later in that game to Eddie. I mean, this man had 40 points doing no crazy moves 
literally left shoulder, right hand hooks, trying to get low position, needing about one or two dribbles. Like this man wasn't facing up. This man was a shooting. Any, like he went to the free throw line a, a bunch of times, but he literally beat us on his own. We didn't make, we didn't do no real double teams. We didn't try to speed the game up. Like this man was a big, did not have to play defense because our offense was no threat to him in the paint or our bigs. And it's just like, you got to get this man, like a 7-4 big that scores 40 points playing 37 minutes of the game is crazy. Bro. It's crazy. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think though, so like think about this though, Brody. Don't you think that was the game plan though? Like let Edie get his and don't let anybody else hurt you. Because if that was the game plan, that worked. <laughs> like nobody else beat us. But the issue like the foul count, I can't get over the foul count, bro. I yeah. can't get over the fa the fact that they shot 33 free throws and mm -hmm. we shot 11 mm -hmm. something is just weird about that to me bro i'm sorry the officiating I, I was completely night and day from the creighton game and the purdue game like they were calling fouls on a walk-up for using his arm bar and some refs this is legal other refs, i don't know if they thought this was too much where he couldn't move at all but when we were playing creighton they did that no fouls was called purdue they called it like immediately on a walker and like soon as Eddie took like two dribbles and they saw that Eddie wasn't making any growl, they called a foul on him. And it's just like, where's the consistency and the rest calling the game? Like, what are we going to do? He's seven, four, almost three. I think he is 300 pounds. Like, what are we, how are we, like, you have to adjust to the matchups in the game. Like you gotta let there be some type of physicality. Yeah. Yep. And they didn't, man. I mean, like he could throw bows, drop step. He was hooking. Uh, Every time. I'm going to say hooking you up, no fouls. And, you know, the NCAA at this point was like, if Purdue can get this to this point, we got to get them in because we know that we want to see UConn and Purdue. Yeah. And they're going to get what they want unless some miracle of NC State. I, I This is the time that it ends. I think I, and it's been cool watching NC State do their thing. But I, I don't that, – they. I'm curious, though, because – one, they're not going to double team Burns like some teams have. And Burns is a contact big that makes quick moves. So he's going to make Eddie play defense. Now, Burns isn't really going to be able to play defense on Eddie. They're probably going to have to throw defense doubles on him. Yeah. But Eddie's not going to be able to relax on defense like he was against Tennessee. And it's a weird matchup for a big that way to play a under the rim big. So I'm actually kind of curious to see how that matchup turns out. Yeah, because he's – man, DJ Burns so smooth, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, his game is so smooth. It's slow, but it's so smooth and methodical, and his touch is like a guard. Mm -hmm. So, if he if he puts it up but within 10, I'm, I mean, I'm you might as well run to the other side of the court. Like, it's pretty much going in. Right. Um, but, so, yeah, man, I, I mean, in the Final Four, who you got in the, in the chip? Um, I got Purdue and UConn, but I have UConn beating Purdue. Yeah, for sure. I got UConn beating Purdue as well. Uh, I think there's opportunity, like I said, for NC State and these guys to potentially get there. Um, but nobody's beating UConn. No. I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it all ends this week. Uh, National Championship is going to be on Monday night. They're in Phoenix, Arizona. Games are on Saturday. Very interested. I'll be tapped into it, but... Uh, Y'all, thank you for tapping in, man, on Chop It Up Friday. Sad, sad Chop It Up Friday with the Vols being done. Uh, we'll talk more about the future of this team, where we go. Transfer portal is wide open. A lot of dogs out there. Who do we go and get? Uh, said they reached out to the cat from Belmont, who's very much a Dalton Connect clone, if you haven't looked at him. Um, I cannot remember his name, but he's nice. Number 10, he was at Belmont. He's a sophomore, so he'll have two years. Uh, smooth, 6'7", long. White dude can flow. Um, Caleb Fry or something like that is his name. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, y'all, so thank y'all so much, man, for tapping in on this Friday. Hope y'all have a great weekend. We'll be back next week with more on spring football practice, a little bit more on hoops. See who won this natty. Uh, but until then, man, enjoy your weekend. For my dog, Seth, it's your boy, Ruck in the Building. Y'all know what it is. It's straight up Tennessee. 
baby. We'll see you back next week. <laughs>